Hi guys and uh, welcome back to Tech Tips. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about soldering. Um, we about a week ago somebody brought a, a faulty speed controller to me and uh, uh, it turned out to be that the solder joint on the plug was the problem, not the actual speed controller. So solder joints and soldering principles are in our hobby I would think is very important, especially if you work with the electric stuff. Okay, so without further ado, um, let's just uh, start by um, explaining, talk a bit about the equipment you use. Um, it is a fact that when you solder uh, or do soldering joints, that the equipment unfortunately is uh, trivial in how your solder joint comes out. Uh, for instance, if you buy a 25 rand soldering iron and do a solder joint and you do that same soldering joint with a 300 rand or 400 rand uh, uh, soldering iron like a weller, you will definitely, definitely notice the difference um, in the solder joints. Um, I prefer to use a temperature controlled base station like this one. You can see I can set the temperature and I can see the temperature there. Uh, the reason why I do that is um, because it's temperature controlled. I can solder anything from small components that fit on a PC board like this uh, to bigger connectors like this and even bigger connectors like the EC5 um, happily solders with the base station like this. Um, also very nice. The tips are interchangeable um, which is very great because uh, sometimes when you do surface mount stuff you can use a smaller tip and uh, yeah you don't need to change the soldering iron for that. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is the solder. Now I always have a discussion with people about solder, solder um, for the simple reason that uh, everybody thinks that you go down to your local hardware shop and you buy uh, a roll of solder and that's fine. Um, I have a big problem with that because experience has told me that it um, doesn't work as well as solder that you would buy from an electronic outlet. Um, I know that the solder solder sold on the Wi-Fi site. Uh, that solder I've tried and it is fine. Um, but try and avoid these cheap solder that you buy from the uh, hardware stores. Okay. Your solder must always be clean. As you can see, I don't know if you can notice, uh, but the solder is actually nice and shiny. That is the way it should be. It shouldn't be dull. It, if it's dull, it means it's corroded. Um, uh, I do not use corroded um, solder because that causes dry joints. Dry joints basically is uh, joints of solder that doesn't bind properly um, on the wires and your soldering joints. Okay. The other thing that I want to show you is this little piece of sponge. Now, this piece of sponge is uh, very necessary. Um, for those who wonder what type of sponge it is, this is actually just standard, uh, these sponges that the women use to clean their face with, and it works very well, and I use it to clean my tip. Okay. The reason for that is it's part of the two rules uh, for working with uh, soldering irons. Uh, the two rules basically is make it neat, make it clean. Okay, so always clean properly and always keep your solder joints neat. If it's neat and if it's clean, it'll probably be a good solder joint. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration for you on how to go about uh, doing a solder joint. Um, and I'm going to start off with doing doing a, a wire join on the on the pad of this little PC board. Okay, this PC board is nothing serious, it's just a PC board I've got lying around. And uh, yes, I'm going to solder this piece of wire onto the PC board here. Okay, right, now the first thing you want to do is just keep, get a piece of solder that is ready. And I use this piece of tweezer as a, as a second hand just to hold the solder. Now the first thing, when you join two pieces, both pieces needs to be tinned. Okay? Um, if I were just to tin the PC board and then place the wire onto the PC board and try and solder it like that, um, by the time that the solder re uh, moves through the wire to give a decent solder joint, the flux would, would be gone and you would start getting sharp tips going out of your solder joint. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the wire. Okay, just put a piece of solder on the soldering iron and you see it starts smoking nicely. I clean my soldering iron. I check that my wire is clean 
and by pressing the solder against the wire, first the heat, then the solder. Okay? And you see I move the solder on the actual uh, piece of wire. Okay. I clean my soldering iron again. And what I'm going to do now is just put a piece of solder on the PC board. Okay, so first the heat, then the solder. Keep the heat there a bit, and there's a nice perfect round blob on the PC board. Okay. The second thing is I'm going to just very quickly just make sure my my wire length is correct, and I'm going to cut a piece off. Okay. Then clean the soldering iron again, and put heat, and then the little piece of wire. Okay, and there she goes. Perfect join. I'm just going to try and move it closer for you. And you can see perfect join there on the PC board. Okay. So again, let us just walk through the steps again. I take my piece of wire, clean my soldering iron. First put the heat on the wire, then the solder. And then turn the piece of wire. There we go. Cleaning the soldering iron again. And let's use the other little uh, pad there. First the heat, then the solder. Okay. There's a nice perfect little blob. I'm going to just shorten this little wire a bit. Okay. First the heat, then the wire. Keep the heat a little bit. And then just take it away. And one more time. Very nice little solder joint uh, on the PC board there. Um, just one thing, these wires, they can get quite hot, uh, especially when you do the connectors, uh, the wires actually get extremely hot. The one thing you should never do is blow on your solder joint. I know it sets quicker if you blow on it, but what could happen is um, you can get a drier solder joint there because the joint actually cools down too quickly. So don't blow on your solder joint. Um, if you're worried that you're going to um, burn your fingers, use a pair of pliers to hold the wire uh, or something to that nature. Okay, right. So I'm just going to demonstrate this now uh, on a typical on a connector. Um, what I'm doing now is basically sometimes these connectors get a little bit hot and they melt. So I just stick it in there. So if it melts, then at least um, it stays in place. And then I use my tweezer, my collapsible tweezer, auto-collapse tweezer, to hold the connector. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to tin my wire one more time, clean the soldering iron, same procedure, first the heat, then the solder. Okay. Now this is quite a thicker piece of wire, so this is going to take a bit wire longer. Make sure that the solder runs all the way through the wire, all the way through. Okay, all right. There's a nicely tinned piece of piece of wire. Okay, so you can see the wire is tinned all the way through. Okay. Next, I'm going to put my blob on the on the on the connector. Okay, first the heat, then the solder. Okay, and you're going to wait until it gets hot enough to flow. And just keep a little bit on, at a time. Add a little bit of solder to keep the flux in there. Okay, right. So my blob is now on the connector. And I'm going to try and show you the blob. I hope you can see that. Nice round blob on there. Okay. So now... I measure my wire, and I see I've got to snip off a little piece, as like so. Try and work neat. Okay. And sometimes you need ten fingers to do one job, but that's all part of soldering. Okay, now over here, I'm first going to heat the blob a little bit, and then bring the wire in. Okay. And then it's got to heat up properly. It's got to heat up properly. It's got to flow properly. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? This is a very good example. Uh, as you can see on the side there, you can see that the, uh, the solder has become uneven. It is not a nice round blob. 
that's a very good indication that um, I ran out of uh, flux uh, inside my solder. So that's very easy to fix uh, without burning my fingers. I'm going to do this now. I'm just going to bring the soldering iron next to it and give it a piece of uh, flux, a piece of solder. Okay. And now you can see. Now you can see it's a nice round uh, solder blob that I've got around it. Okay. Now, if it makes sharp edges, sharp points, um, then uh, your soldering joint is not going to be adequate. Okay. So in short, this is just basically a very short tutori tutorial on how to do um, how to solder. Um, and just very quickly to recap, uh, make sure that you have a, a proper soldering iron. Uh, make sure that you have proper solder. Um, always work neat and always work clean. Um, sometimes you get PC boards uh, that's uh, dirty. Uh, you can clean them with a, a toothbrush um, and some uh, methylated spirits. Um, if it's if it's very oily, then uh, use a little bit of uh, thinners just to clean it off. But then wash it off again afterwards with with um, uh, with some uh, methylated spirits. Even the connectors, if you find that they are very corroded, uh, use a toothbrush and uh, give them a good scrub with some thin thinners, and then wash it off with methylated spirits, and then uh, the soldering joint should be all right. Uh, just remember that uh, dirty wires and uh, connectors. Um, makes bad solder joints. A bad solder joints on your connector will actually cause it to heat up and melt. Um, so yeah, always work clean, always work neat. And if you follow those simple rules, um, you should not have any problems doing any type of soldering room. Um, yeah, so uh, that's basically um, just a very short tutorial on how to solder. Thanks for joining me and uh, see you guys next time. Take me up, baby